renovating a venue like Dodger Stadium, um, the size of it, the age of it, comes with an awful lot of challenges, right? Um, can you speak to some of the major limitations and the implications of those limitations in dealing with a venue like that? Sure. Uh, I think I think the challenges are the really fun part. Uh, yeah. Like I, I think the age. I think everyone's dealt a unique set of cards. Every building, every city, uh, and it has its strengths and weaknesses. But it would be really look at some of the cities that got built on a completely blank slate. And they're some of the more boring cities. They don't have an identity. Mm -hmm. uh, I think those limitations are what make everything great. You have a river cutting right through a city, and that's why you've got this wonderful park, because it was also where there used to be an electrical power plant, and it got demolished 100 years yeah. ago. That kind of fabric is what makes a sports venue really fun, too. Yeah. And so I think the same is true of Skydome, uh, anywhere else. Those quirks are what give people a lot of attachment. And so we go into everything a little more open-minded, I think. We know where we want to end up, but we don't have a strong, stubborn case of how we need to get there. Yeah. So it's saying, all right, well, turns out it costs a million dollars to move this to the left, so it's here now, and how are we going to still plan the space around it? Yeah. Um, so I think there's a cost premium to working on an existing building. Anyone who's working on an existing building probably knows that too. But then there's also a huge benefit of just getting to keep that building and keep adding and building yeah. and building up. What, with, with Dodger Stadium specifically, what were some of those major limitations? Sure, uh, and I think we've got visuals, just so I'm not, uh, otherwise I'll be drawing in midair for you all. <laughs> um, getting around, if you've probably heard about Los Angeles and Los Angeles traffic, the same is true on foot, the same is true on a bike. It is a difficult place to move around. Yeah. Uh, the city was planned after the car already took over. So things, were, pedestrian distances were never prioritized. So even when the original stadium was built, everything was about the car. Uh, and the stadium was actually built in an era in which fans were kept to just the level that they bought their ticket on. Right. And that, I think, stayed a movement in a lot of sports venues only until recently. And especially ballparks have been working really hard to undo that. Because we've got you for four hours. Like We want you to treat everything like it's its own. You're in a city, and you get to wander around. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the stadium is really ultimately built into a hillside. And so even though this looks flat from the top down, it's a 10-story building. Uh, so it's a 10-story building built into the side of a mountain, which is pretty much the only one of its kind. The original engineer of this for the baseball history nuts in here went on to build Shea Stadium, and the big struggle with Shea Stadium was it was built on flat ground. So they recycled a lot of their Dodger Stadium details meant for building into a hillside. And then the main struggle with Shea was how to get up and down the building. Um, so for us, it was knowing that Looking at the building where we first inherited it in 2012 is on the left. And th the capacity didn't change, just as the video told everybody. It remained 56,000, but they had no room to breathe whatsoever. And so all of our improvements essentially started with saying, all right, there are very specific things about the building that we love that we don't want to change. We don't want to touch the colors, the roof, the materials, but how can we add amenities? And it was pretty much an expansion. We use the word renovation, but it's how do you tie an expansion into right. an existing building?